And a hush fell over the crowd. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to your last 407 class for the semester. So how do we top Dahani? Well, we finish up the startup in our final class of the semester. We started with over 60 applicants for this program, and today we are down to the final three. Tragically, two of our mentors have already been eliminated. Ah, oh. Our Sorry, reigning guys. champ Sorry. clearly has not been eliminated, as we heard from the noises over on that side of the stage. And um, today we're going to listen to their final presentations. These guys, as you know, have been on a journey. <coughs> we have asked them to do customer discovery. We have asked them to demonstrate to us that what they are either trying to build or sell has value. We have asked them to prove to us that they have potential customers or people are willing to pay for their product or service. And we are rounding things out, asking them to present both their journey as well as their business plans. It's very important that you pay attention because much of the judging for these finals is in your hands. The way the judging works is as follows. One component of the judging has been each of these three teams has had YouTube videos up for the past week and based on the number of likes they will be ranked one, two, three. Our mentors who no longer have teams in the competition will also be <laughs> judging and ranking their teams one, two, three. And you guys will be ranking the teams one, two, three. Uh, the audience vote counts double. So you guys could truly be the difference makers. And it matters because our winner today walks away with $15,000, which is a nice chunk of change to keep your startup moving. So. Let us quickly reintroduce our wonderful mentors, Adrian, Adrian, Evan, and Jake, and a round of applause for what they've been doing for the last four months for all of these teams. So you're already making noise. How confident are you feeling, Adrian? I mean, I'm, I'm as confident as I can be. I mean, you know, Woodside is here, right? How many teams do you have left? You know, I have, I have the winner, so <laughs> I mean. <laughs> okay, well, we'll see. So let's please welcome Nurable to the stage for the final time. Hi everyone, I'm Abby. And I'm Adam. And we're Team Nurable. We're a revolutionary brain-computer interfa interface company. And we've developed a system that will allow a user to execute actions using only his or her thoughts. Our tech is faster, more economical, and more convenient than anything available in the market. But before we begin, let's watch a quick video about a journey. Hi, my name is Ram Zalkade. I'm a CEO of Neurable. And it's my pleasure today to talk to you guys about our story. But not just our story here at the startup, but also about our company. When I was eight years old, my uncle got into a horrific car accident and lost both his legs. And at that moment, I knew I had to dedicate my life toward creating a world without limitations. And that's truly the mission of Neurable. And so I decided to do my PhD in neuroscience. When we first met here at the startup, we were given three tasks to demonstrate the value of our technology, to find customers, and to acquire them. And what's truly amazing about what we were able to do is some of these customers were only able to communicate and tell us why our technology valued so much because we had Neurable. And that is something that speaks for itself. Not only have we done a lot of development in acquiring customers, such as getting partners like Samsung and Amazon, we also did work within the development of our actual technology. Starting with something that was cumbersome and required gel in about an hour to set up, we went to something that's much more slimmer and can be used in a real world situation, requiring no gel at all and only taking minutes to actually set up. And that's just the beginning of our technology. Our vision is to have this technology everywhere. To have you be able to walk into your house and tell your Roomba to vacuum, turn on your TV, and really control everything using only your thoughts. This is the future that we want to see. And this future not only helps you and me, but helps millions of people with severe disabilities. My name is Rams Alcade. I'm the CEO of Neurable. And with your help, we can change the world.
Did you license that groovy music? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did. So our original inspiration was helping create a world without limitations. The startup has challenged us to reach out to our customers and find out how we can optimally design our product. After speaking to over 130 experts in the neuroscience space, we found that it would be far too inefficient to debut our innovative tech in a stagnating space bogged down by FDA regulations. We spoke to our mentors and we asked ourselves and realized that we can achieve faster market validation by pursuing the augmented and virtual reality industries, all while maintaining our long-term goal of making the world a better place. So what does this mean for us? We, want, we envision a world where you can put on a controller and use the force as Luke Skywalker simply by willing it. We want to enter an exciting, explosive new realm. And what this means is that our technology will be usable by everyone and not just those limited with handicaps. These controllers, analog controllers and computer keyboards, are a daunting reminder that we've yet to achieve the full immersion that we're looking for in games. What our technology will do is allow us to place that controller in the minds of a user, and we can employ our, our algorithm to predict a user's intent and execute that action within game. What we've developed is an EEG headset with a VR gear that will allow a user to immerse themselves completely in the world of the game and allow them to interact with it as they would in real life, using only their thoughts. We're also in the process of developing a software development kit that will allow anyone to integrate their existing technology with our own software and hardware. And what does this mean for us? Our business model has changed from simply licensing our exciting algorithm to a two-pronged approach. One, we're gonna sell a brain tech headset lined with the EEG sensors that's gonna be compatible with all virtual reality gear available on the market, from Oculus to Vive. We're also gonna sell and license our software development kit. And since we began the startup, we've actually already de developed four hardware prototypes and six software prototypes, helping us make this dream a reality. And what an incredible journey it's been since we've began the startup. We've been finalists in some of the world's largest startup competitions. We've had the pleasure to demo our technology to the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, TEDx, South by Southwest, and have been winning awards and grants even TechArb's MVP award as awarded by our peers. We just want to say thank you to the university and its affiliates because they've afforded us so many resources, opportunities, and guidance all along this journey. And I mentioned that we demoed at all of these conferences. So what came of it? People loved our technology and our vision so much that they actually flew our team out to California to meet us. We were even able to give a personal demo to the head of Disney's animation studio. But what happened? We're just one step away. If we had the money from the startup, we'd be able to set up our own VR studio, purchase every single item, and really take over the market so that we can integrate our own technology. And what, where do we see ourselves? Soon we will all be graduating, and then as soon as we graduate, and one day plus, we'll be moving in together. We're foregoing full-time jobs and internships to really make Neurable a reality. Help Neurable change the world. Thank you. Thank you, Neurable. I would ask you now to remain on the stage so some of our mentors can ask you some questions. Well, I'd start by saying this is a huge vision you guys have. You know, it's, you've painted a huge picture for us here, obviously. Um, and the potential is, is, is really amazing. I would. Um, I'd say that one question concern that I'm, that I'm having, because we've been you know, here for six weeks and it's great to see that you guys are, are pivoting, but you started off with a pretty clear use case, I thought, you know, in helping people in wheelchairs and it seemed like it was part of you know, the founding principle of your founder. Um, and now we're moved over to controlling a car and now I think we're talking about um, a VR uh, gaming solution. So what is it, a, you know, it's a little bit of a lack of focus. I want to know where, why, we, why we've landed here and left some of those other things behind so quickly. So we didn't actually leave them behind. What happened was we pursued the medical route, but we were bogged down by so many problems and potential FDA regulations that we figured that it would be faster to, prove market, to have market validation if we entered the VR world and really help everyone much more quickly than if we were to focus on the medical route. The car, that's just to demonstrate our technology. The system, 
that's the proof to the world what we can do. So how, now with the shift to VR, AR, kind of in this space, how do you, how do you compete, right? There are some super well-funded competitors out there in that market that are super established. They've already been acquired. Um, what's the end? How do you get there? So we're actually hoping to work with these AR, VR companies. Our primary competitor is a company called MindMaze. So they're a technology that works like us. However, their accuracy is only 60%. We've achieved a 98% accuracy. Their setup time is around one hour and they use a gel electrode system. Our technology works entirely with dry electrodes, meaning we've reduced that from one hour to minutes. And our training time is also within minutes. So we're becoming the first brain computer interface so company. So why partner with them though if they're far inferior? No, they, they're our competitor. I'm talking about them. Oh, we're, oh. we're partnering with AR VR companies. So the Got distinction it. here is between brain computer interface companies and AR VR companies. So at least for the first stage of our company, first stage of the production, we've realized it would be far more efficient to partner with an Oculus or a Vive for their headset and we'll integrate it with our technology. And you're actually hoping to eventually be fully agnostic as to the hardware piece, right? Absolutely. That's our long-term goal. Guys, so then you... why the headset of your own if you're fully agnostic? No, no. For now, we want to create our own brain tech headset, but yeah. we foresee a future that we can also create once we achieve scale, create our own VR visor to, to go along with it. Guys, when, when are you going to jump off the, um, the the business plan train of jumping everywhere to, to try to get all this? Like, there's there's great value in getting non dilutive money, but at some point, you got to focus. I mean, Ramsey isn't even here; he's down in Houston at Rice, right? And so, when when do you guys actually stop and focus? and actually try to get some real credible partnerships going. So that is what we're doing right now, and that's what the startup would really help us with. With the money from here, we could get that minimal viable product that all of our key strategics said that they needed in order for us to go forward. Uh, we also are in the final conversations with some of the world's best accelerators, and we'll hear back in about a month. Can I ask a question about your partners? Because you have a beauty slide that has Disney and Amazon and Microsoft. What do those logos really mean? What type of agreements do you have in place? So they saw us at all these conferences. They love what we had. And then they met with Ramses and the rest of our team out in California. So what, that, what they bring to the table is a future partnership that if, when, when we can demonstrate that our technology is able to be scaled and able to be sold, then we'll have our further conversation. So we're So we're nothing just, confirmed right now. These are sort of budding kind of conversations. They swiped right, right, but they haven't gotten married <laughs> yeah, yet. We wouldn't, call, so. yeah, we wouldn't call them partners. Okay. Exactly. Okay, Thank any you. final thoughts before we uh, ask Nurbal to leave the stage? I'd, I'd just like to say real quick that this has been an awesome team to work with. Um, this is a technology where everybody I talk to, whether it's a potential user someday of venture capital firm, uh, potential partners are so interested in this space and so excited about this idea. Um, you just don't see that very often. I think this, this, this company and this technology has a huge future. And I think that the class hopefully and all of the judges hopefully think about kind of the legacy of this class. What do we want coming out of this? And this kind of technology, which hopefully puts this class, this university, you guys on the map, is really interesting and really differentiated and it's it's been a lot of fun so congrats wow thank you. nice closer okay thank you very much nerbal <laughs> next up please welcome AOE AOE medical and ariana carley hi and welcome to the finale of the startup for those of you who are just joining us for the first time, my name is Ariana Carley. I am the CEO and co-founder of AOE Med, a medical device company focused on solving problems associated with bariatric patient transfer. So just to give you a little bit of background in case you're new, uh, over two million people are injured every year moving and transferring patients between chair and bed. This is costing the healthcare industry approximately $20 billion annually. And it's a problem I've seen firsthand, having spent the past seven years working in healthcare. And so, we decided to go about this and solve this problem by creating the bariatric patient transfer device to move patients between chair and bed seamlessly, efficiently, and safely. And to date, we've had a few big accomplishments, such as getting leisure intent for our first 15 chairs or $135,000 revenue. We've had it speaking with lots of distributors. We've spoken with manufacturers to get our product actually made. And to tell you a little bit more about some of our other accomplishments, here's a video, oh, sorry, I guess I should be on this slide. 
But um, to tell you a little bit more about our other accomplishments, here's a video of our team detailing some of the things we've done. We did healthcare discovery speaking with over a thousand people in the healthcare industry. We talked to nurses, patients, hospital administrators, owners, people at other medical companies like Stryker, and more. Put together a social media page and website to start exposing people to the patient transfer problem and our solution. We designed, prototyped, redesigned, and then manufactured our bariatric patient transport device. We spoke with potential customers and created a customer base with purchasing structures we understood. With distributors such as Bandline and Twin Mentor to set up distributions for our product. Putting together slide decks, executive summaries, and business plans in order to raise capital. We spoke with the FDA and regulatory attorneys in order to get our device classified and properly understand the regulation. We set up a user study to test a chair in a real hospital environment. We, we met with design and production firms to outsource our final two prototypes for our user study. Hi, my name is Ariana Carley, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of AOE Med. And I need your help. We need your votes in order to actually get to the next level and raise enough capital to make it our solution a reality and make a difference for patients and nurses alike. So as you're voting today, please vote for AOE Med and have your vote make a difference. Now you might be wondering, if you do vote for us and you give us the $15,000, what on earth are we going to do with it? It's simple. We're going to use that money directly to pay for our four chairs to be manufactured to send down to our user study down in Westchester General Hospital. This means that your contribution would be going directly to the creation and manufacturing of our first four prototypes to be sent down to a hospital in Miami, as well as go through the FDA process to get them cleared to do so. This would allow us to gather data on how our chair is being used in a real hospital environment allow us to see exactly how it's impacting the hospital injuries and how that could be extrapolated upon to go beyond that to other hospitals. Further, it's allowing us to make adjustments before we fulfill our first 15 chair orders. It's allowing us to see what do we want to change so that we're producing the best product possible to help the most people. Beyond that, the user study is giving our company validation, which we greatly need as a young company. By completing the user study with this $15,000, we're able to go forward. We're able to speak to the 250 hospitals and nursing homes that we've already spoken to and say, here is data that we have collected. Here's how our chair is being used. And here's how many people we can stop from being injured within your facility, or an estimate thereof. So we would greatly appreciate, as you're going forward today, and thinking about all of the three teams that are all doing amazing things, to think about how you can directly impact people's lives how you can make a difference and mitigate the risk of someone else receiving an injury, potentially someone you know, whether it's a parent, a grandparent, a nurse, or heck, even you in 50 years. And we urge you to vote for AOE Med and have your vote make a difference. Thanks. Very nice job, Ariana. <laughs> I was actually thinking me in maybe five years, but... Um... <laughs> That's you made nice. me feel old. Nice. Who would like to start off I'm, with some questions? Know, I'm, still, I'm still kind of having trouble understanding why you can't, you can't do you know, purchase order first, right? Mm -hmm. you know, uh, I know you've got some FDA, but there's got to be some exceptions and use cases such that yeah. you can actually sell a prototype um, and, and get this up front more than just the LOI's letter of intent that I see up there. It's actually really funny that you said that because after your feedback, I think it was two, three weeks ago, I don't remember, but after your feedback last round, we went out and we started actually speaking to people and are in the process of converting some of the letters of intent and some of our more maybe interested into purchase orders to start raising that capital up front. One, also because it's always good to have further capital and we can produce more chairs quicker. But two, just as you're saying, is it does validate us in a very similar way. So we're looking to convert, I think at the moment, we're talking to three different hospitals about doing purchase orders for around 12 chairs. Yeah, I mean, that, that you want to see that reflected up there when we see that, but. Sorry. <laughs> and you, you spoke a bit about the FDA. What is that timeline mm -hmm. that actually kind of has to play out after you um, see some of those demos come through? So there's a few different aspects to that. So one is actually flying out to Baltimore to meet with people of the FDA to really put a face to the process rather than just 
having it be a streamlined process. The other is right now we're working with a regulatory attorney here in town in Ann Arbor and having them do our regulatory assessment, which means that they're going to be classifying the device, they're going to be putting together the entire file. But to what's the top end time to actually get it approved, right? Like, is that a two-year process, a five-year process? Oh, no, so it's actually very simple. It really depends whether we're class one or young yeah, class yeah. two. So the process could be under six months or it could be a year and to actually get the device out but it's nowhere near to your process. Where, where, where in the team there, where is your 10 to 15 year manufacturing veteran, right? Mm -hmm. You're gonna outsource the manufacturing clearly, but yes. you still have to have someone who actually understands what that is. And I, I guess I don't, I don't see that on the team that I see in that video. Mm -hmm. So our team is actually going to be working towards expanding. So once we actually raise capital, we're hoping to put together a board of advisors who can give us advice or we will bring in someone. Currently we're working with, and I'm going out to the factory later this week to meet with our manufacturer who is more of a partner in the sense that they are giving us guidance on this. They've done medical devices before, they've worked with the FDA before, they have completed processes similar to this, they've done transfer chairs, they've done uh, gurneys, they've done geriatric chairs, and they're very much helping us at the moment, but I agree with you, we are working to expand our team to bring Yeah, it's on not people. enough, you gotta have somebody in Yeah, there. I agree with you 100%. Well, I'm guessing Adrian isn't your mentor, huh, Ariana? <laughs> <laughs> I think Adrian is a mentor, though, he gives you valuable advice. And Thank it's you. something we're working on. Adrian is very competitive. <laughs> <laughs> Other Adrian questions. Wants to help too. <laughs> I, I'll just say I think it's it's a a great goal and cause that you're fighting for, which drives you to build your business. And it's clear, you know, like un, unlike some other companies, your vision is very clear about what you're trying to accomplish here, um, and it's meaningful and it's helping people. So I think that's really admirable. And I think the one thing I'd go to is really about just the sales instinct that you have as an entrepreneur because I think the key here is you gotta sell the dream and you gotta get someone to give you money and the same passion that you have out here and, and you're pitching the audience, it's really just figure out a way to get somebody to write you a check because there's a lot of money flowing out of these hospitals and in these big medical groups so um, the money's there but, and it might be a little experimental but if you can give that, you know, if you can pitch them and, and sell them like you, like you sold the panel here or like the audience, I think that's, that's really where the focus should be. Ariana, could you also clarify, you talked about getting the test run in Florida. If you got the money today, when would you actually be able to implement that test and have results back? Uh, assuming the meeting with the regulatory attorney and our manufacturer goes well this week, we'd be able to implement the test in approximately six and a half months. Okay. So, and vote for AOE. Is it, is it worth, to, to, to your point, is it worth bringing up some of the relationship stuff down in Florida that you guys have developed and talk a little bit about your team dynamics that have um, <coughs> make that a possibility? I mean, currently, one thing that we're definitely doing, uh, we have a few things, so part of our team is split between Miami, Florida, and Ann Arbor, and in Miami, Florida is where we actually have most of the hospitals and nursing homes that have signed the letters of intent and we're speaking to about purchase orders. Uh, we also are speaking with investors down there who have, not just for capital, of course we are trying to raise half a million, but also for the purpose of advisory boards. And we have two very serious investor, investors that have the resources in terms of manufacturing, in terms of connections to hospitals, and some of their investors are hospital and nursing home owners, which we think will, yes, not be necessarily enough, but will give us a very firm leg up in understanding the exact process of what you need to do to be successful in the medical sphere. And we're really lucky right now, we're in the process of doing term sheets and looking them over, so hopefully, you guys will all support this, and I can get you to be as passionate about this as I am to really help get us started with the 15K, and then we'll be able to get them to sign off on the half a million, which would get us to go far beyond. Okay, final thoughts from your mentors. Sell, sell uh, us. So Aria, as you guys can probably tell, or if you already know her, she is a total force of nature, and I just want to congratulate you. You're going to be successful regardless of this class, kind of regardless of even this first step, you've gotten so much further than a lot of people get in their entrepreneurial endeavors and their dreams, and you're so passionate about it. And every time that I brought you in front of anyone, everyone is just super impressed and super sold on this idea and want to want to purchase. So this is going to be wildly successful, kind of with or without the 15 grand, I think, even though I think it'd be great if you, if you, <laughs> if you, if you got it. And, and um, I just... I'm a big, big fan and I want to be able to kind of help you as you develop this thing and whatever else you end up doing, you're awesome and just congrats on all the progress. Oh, thanks. That's a great way to go out. Thank you very much, Ariana and AOE Med. <laughs> now we are going to shift gears away from neurology and medical devices and we are going to welcome 
the indomitable Woodside Distributors. Yeah. Hi, everyone. In the past three weeks since we last took this stage, we've been up to a lot. Here you can see our Woodside team with hands-on training, so we don't use any sort of training module or manual. Alex and Mitch, as well as myself, spend time with each of our team members developing. We currently have 11 University of Michigan undergraduate students working on Woodside distributors. On the right, you can see myself as well as Bailey and Danielle with a supplier that we flew out to New York for a quick day trip to get better pricing. It worked. Last time, we suggested that with the $15,000 prize money from this competition, we can net $500,000 of increased revenue. So we're going to talk about how we do that. Since this competition started in December, our revenue has grown 80%. Our profit margin is between 5 to 10% each month, and on average it's grown 2%, which is a very significant amount. When we think about continued growth like this, it makes Alex, Mitch, myself, and the Woodside team very excited. With fast-paced growth, we do run into challenges. We've run into the challenge of efficient training. There are three of us that are working with eight other students every week. To do this, we've reached out to mentor support around Ann Arbor. We're working with Bill Crane, who I think you guys might be familiar with Bill. He runs Industry Star, which started out of TechArb. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. And Bill has been working with us on how to train staff efficiently, because he's done it. Additionally, we're working on increasing profitability, where Alex spends a lot of his time focusing on that profitability number. To increase our bottom line, we are investing in technology. Right now, we're looking at demand forecasting tools. So if we know our sales historically, we can predict 30 and 60 days out how, many, how, much, invento sorry, how much inventory we will need, which allows us to do better purchasing and make great decisions today. Looking ahead, we are taking a three-pronged approach to our continued growth. The first prong is growing our team. We are currently looking for marketing, brand management, and tech development students that are undergraduates at the University of Michigan that have an entrepreneurship drive that will join us and continue our growth. Secondly, we're looking to add brands and further our relationships with new suppliers. We're doing this by, it's really as simple as cold calling, which Danielle and Bailey, who are in that last picture, are getting awesome at. And finally, we're investing in technology, and Mitch is spending a lot of his time here focusing on what tools we can use to increase our profitability. Using these three approaches, we will grow our revenue to a run rate of $5 million by the end of 2016. That kind of growth is, really excites us and gets us motivated to wake up in the morning. When we talk about a $5 million run rate, I do want to stress that we've taken the risk profile out of the business. So as some of the other teams here today are suggesting very big ideas, Woodside, we know that with a $15,000 prize, we can turn that into increased hiring of University of Michigan students and increased profit for Woodside. We've got to say a thank you to a few key factors that allow us to be standing in before you today. The first is to our mentor, Adrian Fortino, Thank you, Adrian, for helping us prep for presentations like this, as well as help us on our general business strategy. It's really appreciated. Adrian's helped us to embed technology into our core business. Secondly, the Center for Entrepreneurship and Tom Frank, we've gotten both grant money and mentorship from both the CFE and the Zeller Institute out of Ross. And the Ross School of Business has given us resources and office space to operate our business. We don't even have to pay rent. <laughs> And finally, yeah. you. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> finally, you. Uh, I started this business five and a half years ago selling Xbox accessories on eBay. Didn't imagine that I'd be standing with two of my best friends. I knew both of them for a long time. We've done $4 million of revenue in the last two years. And it's just fun to be a part of a company like this. So thank you to the audience that has supported us. You guys have voted us through to these rounds. And as we grow, we're looking for additional undergraduates to join our team. So based on what we've presented, if this is something that you might be interested in, we're going to be sticking around and we'd love you to reach out. We're looking to grow the Woodside team. Now I'm going to let some of our staff members in the video talk about Woodside more. Thanks so much for your time and vote Woodside. Over the past few months, my journey with Woodside distributors has been the most valuable experience of my life. As a team, we didn't have the resources to take advantage of the opportunity that we saw so we made the decision to hire eight University of Michigan students 
taking our business to the next level. These past few months, we completed the difficult process of training our team members while continuing to run our business. With bi-weekly meetings and hands-on training sessions, our team has learned how our business operates and what it takes to make money. Working at Woodside has taught me a lot about business communication. I mean, every day I'm working with people who are double or even triple my age, which has really taught me to be more confident and poised. Just last week I flew out to New York where I got to negotiate with suppliers face-to-face -to, -face to strengthen our relationship in person. One of my favorite things about working at Woodside is being able to use my skills to complement what I've learned in the classroom. By taking what I've learned about elasticity and applying it to our pricing model, I've been able to learn about the e-commerce industry and specifically about just how many variables go into Woodside's complex pricing strategies. As a brand manager, I take thousands of lines of data that we generate every week and translate that into reordering and pricing decisions. That's taught me a lot about the e-commerce industry as a whole, as well as the importance of protecting profit margins by decreasing costs. Another way we've grown is by implementing new technology. I've worked with our software developers to automate several of our day-to-day -day processes. As a result, we've increased our operating efficiency and our margin. Because of account managers like me, we are able to add new products each week. Over the past few months, we have grown in revenue because of the increase in the number of products we sell, and to be a part of that has been truly incredible. Our journey over these past few months has helped us prove scalability. With the model we've created, we plan to continue growing our team. At Woodside Distributors, we're excited for what lies ahead. Our journey is far from over. Yeah. Nicely done. That's a nice video. That is well done. Come a little closer, gentlemen, so they can ask you questions. <laughs> Who wants to kick it off? Well, I'll just start by saying that you guys are clearly entrepreneurs. You know, you're going you're gonna to find uh, opportunities to make money and, and build businesses. And so it's really clear that you guys have that instinct in you, and that's really impressive. Um, uh, you know, about the business that you built so far, um, I have some, some big questions. We have a saying that not all revenue is created equal, and we see a lot of revenue numbers on the screen here, but I just want to understand the revenue. I think I had a question for you this last time. Um, you say your, your profit margin is 5 to 10 percent. Um, what does that mean? Is that your, when you say profit, because I think a profit is like profit you put in your pocket. Are you saying that's your gross margin, or is that your profit margin? So when we talk about profit margin, we're talking about net operating profit. So after we've taken our revenue and then take off our COGS and other various expenses, um, that's our bottom line. And all the money that we're taking for profit, we're reinvesting back in the business to afford our inventory and then also um, fuel our growth. That's cash in hand, Jake. I mean, they could be investors in your next fund. Um, no, it sounds like it's not, actually. Yeah. So that's why I was asking yeah. about that. Um, no, no, it actually, can, I, can I add one more piece to that? Yeah, sure. Um, so Alex and Mitch actually don't have equity in the company, so I hold all the equity for Woodside. And to, these guys so are the, really, so really the, smart. I'll disregard their question, answer, or no, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> these guys are really that's smart. That's really going to endear you to the audience. <laughs> so They want to know, you know, like, what is, what is the true, like, cash in hand profit, right? So paying these guys isn't easy. So we pay them very well, as well as we have a lot of st our staff sitting in the seats right here. Everyone is paid. I have not taken a salary. And so all of the money that I am generating is profit. So that's 5 to 10% of our monthly sales <clears throat> is going back so that we can increase the size of our team and hire additional students because the potential is huge. So my qu I guess and a little bit to build off what Jake's <coughs> question is, and I echo everything Jake said, you guys are killing it, right? And like you, you guys are achieving things that, especially as VC investors, we hope to see people achieve a lot faster, and you guys are hitting that. I guess my core question comes back to, what's the value you are creating in the world? What, what is that motivating mission? Because it seems very opportunistic kind of price arbitrage, which can make a ton of money. I used to work on Wall Street. I get that desire. But what actually is that drive? What is Woodside Distributor changing in the world? And I guess that's what I'm missing. So what we're doing really well is reducing overhead cost. So one of our best-selling products right now is a pet shampoo. I know. <laughs> None of us are experts at it, but we sell a lot of it. And with the pet shampoo, when you're buying shampoo online, you're not paying for an office, given that we don't have an office. You're not paying for set, like, huge salaries and executive salaries. We're taking the overhead piece out of online purchasing and are driving down the cost to customers. It really is as simple as that, and the opportunity is huge as long as we can keep our lean model and grow it. And is that sustainable, though? I mean, I guess that's it. it, it well, that driving motivation is awesome until you hit a certain point, and then you do have to have overhead, right? Overhead is important at some point. Absolutely, level. and that's where you have to lean on people that have done it before. 
So we have a large mentor base, and even like Menlo Innovations, we meet with Rich Sheridan all the time. He built a company. Meeting with Adrian yeah. and talking through how do we keep our costs down is how we spend our time and how we think about Woodside. And I guess that's kind of where I want to go back, right? Free rent lasts for so long, and then you have to pay rent, <laughs> and then you have to pay your people more, and then you have to do the things that other businesses have to do. <laughs> so what's the overarching driving motivation that gets you through that? Because driving down overhead costs, only, it's only sustainable for so long. Let me ask it in a slightly different way. I, I totally agree with this point. What's the big picture? Yeah. Like, what do you want to What do you want to be when you grow up? That kind of That kind of That would you If you want to be a hundred million dollar Amazon reseller, that's a business. That's yeah. a great business. Actually, you can make a lot of money. Is that what What do you guys want to do? Be well, concise. Uh, we're wrapping up here. Uh, so you say hundred million dollar uh, Amazon reseller. We think maybe even bigger. So we've been around for five years now, and we're going to be around for the next ten years. We've mitigated a lot of risk in building our business, and as we go forward, we've got a model that works. So our growth strategy is really just beginning. With the goal of what? Ex exiting, somebody buys your company? What do you, what do you no. want to do? Yeah, so um, just to give a couple figures, in the fourth quarter of 2015, 51% of growth in retail came from Amazon. Um, and the fastest growing seller marketplace in Amazon are third party sellers like us. So we don't see an exit strategy anytime soon. We want to grow this business and take it to the potential that we think it can grow to, um, which is why we want to grow our team. We want to invest in technology and see where it takes us. Okay, um, yeah, I got to so wrap you that, up. It All is right. that $100 million plus target, right? That's yes. what they're going for. Yes. So, and a couple of things, clarification. They, you guys are, you are investing in the growth of your company right now. You could take more money off the table if you wanted to. You're choosing not to. You're choosing it to plow it back in. That's your choice, and that makes a, a good, I think it's a good choice for them right now. Look, you guys are, have been a joy to be with. You guys are the most coachable team uh, that I've met in years. I'm so excited to have ha had the opportunity to coach you guys, work with you. I know we're going to continue to chat. Um, and I mean, I think the thing that to look at is like, yeah, you know, certainly this is a different kind of business than a conventional venture one, but this is a real business, and they, they will do $5 million this year, $10 million next year, $20 million year after that, right? Uh, and I think it's just fantastic. So you guys are awesome. Okay, I'm going to be in an AOE med bed if we don't wrap this up. So let's say thank you to Woodside. Job well done. So hopefully at this point in the semester, if you were wondering why we were doing this in the beginning of the semester, why do we care about watching other people pitch their teams? Um, why do I care about somebody else's startup? After the presentations that you just saw today, you have a much deeper appreciation for the work, the steps, the stumbles, and you've been able to see at least these three teams make real tangible progress. But I also mentioned at the beginning of the semester, one of the reasons why we set up these mentor relationships is because we want all of the teams who participate in this to continue to benefit and to grow. So on that note, I would like to welcome back two teams that were eliminated previously in the startup, but allow them to also give you an update on their progress. First, please welcome Steve and John, uh, MD, and he's going to tell you what's been happening with AIM Tech. How's it going? So uh, we have been working at AIMTECH. We've had some progress. Just to remind you guys, so we're the team that's working on the ultra low cost, uh, simple dual pressure ventilator. And so when I was two, I had a pneumonia. Actually, in medical school now, we're studying about pneumonia, so it's kind of fun. But I had a pneumonia. I was in Cleveland at the time. I was treated. It was completely fine. The reality is that for a lot of kids around the world, there aren't ventilators. There aren't simple, easy to use ventilators. And so those kids are dying. And that was really, um, I grew up in Nepal, and so I was right at a hospital and got to see that. Um, that was really the impetus for this design project. And so in terms of some progress, on the business side, we've been looking more, so you can say something like, we're going to sell a device to people in India. Well, there's a lot of different people in India. Um, and actually what we've been looking at now is, rather than targeting the hospitals, looking at like community health workers and midwives and seeing if we can make our device simple enough <clears throat> so that it can still treat these very sick babies but out in the community because the reality is many of these people don't have the resources to even get to a hospital so that's been really helpful 
Um, we've charted out our FDA pathway to get regulatory approval. Um, on the engineering side, we've been doing more work with device optimization. Um, again, if this is going to be connected to a baby, you want to make sure that it's delivering the right pressures every time without fail. So just a lot of additional testing to make sure it's reliable. And then for me, what's been kind of exciting, so in the last couple of months, we've actually gotten a preterm and a full term mannequin. So their lungs and their chest and all that is just like an actual baby's. And we've tested the device um, for days continuously to see what it actually delivers. And we finished that testing. Now actually we're collaborating with a group at the University of Michigan to test it on animals. And um, subsequent to that, later this summer, we're going to start our pilot uh, safety and feasibility testing um, on infants. And so there's a ton of paperwork and, and whatnot required to get that done, but we're really excited for that. Um, and then we've been applying for grants. Gates actually has a program, Saving Lives at Birth, which is like a supernatural fit. And um, through the Gates, actually, we've got, been in contact with the pediatric pulmonologist, and so we're actually working with him to plan a much bigger safety and efficacy study. And the way these sorts of things work, um, if you can do like a really big definitive study with researchers and show that your device um, is able to provide a safety benefit and it's still like at a very affordable price point, then you can get onto like WHO level policy to where this becomes the standard in Asia and Africa. And so that's really what we're aiming for in a couple of years. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what we've been up to. And I think in terms of stuff we've learned in the last couple of months, the, the medical, we've been doing a lot of like engineering and medical work because that's really at the heart of our business. If the device works and helps the babies, then we're in business. If it doesn't, then we're not in business. Um, but we've really been uh, looking a lot more at, do we actually want the doctor to be doing this or could we move this beyond the doctor to like nurses and community health workers um, actually running this in places even more rural than we had thought initially. So yeah. That's awesome, congratulations. We would like to continue. I don't have a big uh, Ed McMahon check for you, but we have $1,000 for you to continue your work. So thank you very much. Thank you. We'll look forward to hearing more updates. I'm going to need that microphone back up. Next up, we have Duncan Abbott from Trapno. They've had a pretty exciting spring as well. Hey, guys. Um, so if you don't remember, we're Trapno. We're working on developing the first open world virtual reality game for mobile. And um, just going to talk a little bit about where we've been the past few months, what we've been doing, where we are now, and where we want to go. Over the past few months, we've come a long way in development, in content generation, and in, as a business. So we've developed a lot of new libraries and player control mechanisms and tweaked our code so that we've improved distortion. We have many new powers the player can use to interact with the world and many new ways that the player can adventure and explore this new space. Um, Content-wise, we've actually produced over 20 original soundtracks that have been uh, composed and recorded for our game, as well as recorded all of the dialogue from our master script. Um, as a business, actually, which is maybe the most exciting, we've participated in many different funding opportunities. The startup, not the least, where not only did we get a lot of money, but we got great mentorship from Jake and from people Jake actually put us in contact with. There was one company that's a VR like production company that we were put in contact with, and they've been great mentors and taught us a lot about what it means to produce VR in this space. We've also been part of Optimize, which is an LSNA kind of accelerator through the university, and we just last week got $17,000 from them to work over the summer. We also were at MTank last week and won over $1,000 and entrance into TechArb, which is really exciting. And, um, we just wrapped up a Kickstarter in which we raised over $15,000 also for our work over the summer. Awesome. Wow, so, Duncan, and what have you been doing in your spare time? And I feel like, <laughs> and I feel like Oprah, but we're going to give you another $1,000 for coming back today and reporting out. So thank you very much. Thanks, Tom. We will look forward you to your progress as well. If I could ask all three teams to come on stage, I'm hoping we have a judging decision. Hey. The votes are in. And we have this year's winner by a one point margin. If I could ask Professor Gibson to come out, usually when I write checks as big, it's to the government. Please congratulate this year's winner, Woodside. I would also like to congratulate AOE and Nurable. You guys did an amazing job. Um, you have our continued commitment to make sure that you guys are as successful as you need to be. Thank you guys very much.
But how do you want to play this game of football? Do you want to play it for yourself or you don't want to play it for others? Do you want to be the best player on the team? Do you want to start thinking and being more proactive in your approach to being a professional football player? Or do you want to sort of just be reactive to the way that they're teaching you?